if it isn't my dear partners. That voice, it's Nadia! <laughs> I didn't expect to run into you guys here today. Are you headed somewhere? How about you, Navia? Are you still busy rebuilding Poisson? Uh, we've wrapped up most of the rebuilding, but there are still a few things left to take care of. Stocking up on materials, confirming construction timelines, discussing compensation terms with families affected by the disaster. Uh, uh, between all of that, I've been making a lot of trips between the court and Poisson. Well, though the victims have received relief payments from the court, in my opinion, as the administrators of Poisson, Spina di Rosula should take some responsibility as well. Our financial situation right now isn't the best, so all we've been doing is signing agreements for the damages to be repaid at a later date. Though just pieces of paper now, they demonstrate our commitment. They're necessary to restore the people's faith in us. Oh, spoken like a true president. You're a really responsible leader. That must be taking up most of your time, though, right? Oh, you bet. Between that and all the other errands I have to run at the court, I'm always forgetting one thing or another. So before I came over this time, I took a page from Elusa's book and decided to make a list of everything. This way, it's easy to see which tasks you haven't checked off. And then, since Malus loved using shorthand, I decided to also follow his example and come up with some shorthand of my own. But after running a few errands in the city, I'm kind of struggling to even read my own handwriting anymore. <laughs> that does sound like you, all right. So what kind of shorthand did you use? Oh, wanna take a look? Let Paimon see! Uh, wait! There's nothing here but a bunch of weird symbols. This looks like a... a piece of kelp wrapped around a stick. And this other one... Um... Is it supposed to be a boar in a box? Hmm... Uh, the first one has to do with confirming the final payment amount for the fishermen. While the second one... is a reminder to try the new burger that just hit the market. Okay, Paimon can definitely see how you might forget what each of these mean. <laughs> Thank you for your advice. These are the kinds of things you only really figure out once you've tried them out yourself. I thought that as long as I understood my shorthand when I came up with it, I'd be sure to remember the symbols when I looked at them later. Unfortunately, I've definitely proven myself wrong. Well, now you know for next time. Anyway, I should have already taken care of most of the things on the list. There are still a few symbols that I can't decipher, but I don't think they're anything too super important. Worst comes to worst, I'll just make another trip. Ah, so you're going to head back now? Yep, that's the plan. Oh, actually, since we talked about the reconstruction earlier, want to come with me and check out the town for yourself? You said you don't have any plans, right? So we can just catch a boat and head over. It won't take long at all. Uh, it's a bit sudden, but Pyron doesn't see why not. What do you think, Traveler? Then let's go. We'll take a boat over. Oh, you mean the Aquabus, right? Like the Clementine one? Oh, sorry. I meant our own boat. The Aquabus doesn't have a station near Poisson, so we'll use one of the Spina's boats. All right, follow me. I'll take you there. Mm, the engineer is still doing a few routine safety checks. We can head out as soon as we get the green light. So, Paimon has always wanted to ask. The three Aquabus lines are all named after people in your family, right? Yeah, that's right. Callus and Navia are self-explanatory, while Clementine was the name that my mother went by. If you provided the Mora to build the lines, then why isn't there even a dedicated line to Poisson? Spina di Rosula built all the lines, yet you still have to take a special boat just to go home. Paimon doesn't get it. Well, what 
What I heard is that most of our businesses don't actually use Poisson as a hub. So there was no real reason to build a line straight to Poisson. You are right that it is a bit strange, though. If you've already committed to build three lines, why not just add a fourth? Yeah, that's what Freeman's saying. The Aquabus is so convenient, it's really a huge shame. Well, it is what it is. You know what my father was like. Even I often struggled to figure out what was going on in his head. <laughs> but that would only be the case if he cared about what others thought. My father was always really stubborn. Once he made up his mind, good luck getting him to change it. From what I've heard, the rights of all the other members of the Spina only went as far as giving him advice or suggestions, and no farther. That included my mother, too. Huh. Well, that explains why you weren't on the greatest of terms with him. Yeah, because I wouldn't just let him keep getting his way. He was just... <sighs> not very agreeable. Boss, the boat's ready. We can head out. All right, then let's head out. It'll be a while before we get to Poisson. Let's keep talking. Hmm, Nadia, what was your mother like as a person? Oh, Paimon, sorry. She totally forgot that you mentioned before that she passed away during childbirth, so you probably don't remember her at all. Uh, that's all right. I've heard many stories about her from the rest of the Spina. They've always said that they were sure we would have gotten along famously. While my papa was stiff like a board, my mother was supposedly super cheerful and funny. Their complimentary personalities allowed them to make up for each other's flaws. My father would run the businesses and expand our reach, while my mother would keep the peace and make sure that everyone was happy. Their work made sure that the Spina could grow and thrive. Sounds like they were not just a well-matched couple, but fantastic business partners as well! Yeah, but those are just stories and anecdotes after all. It's hard for me to piece together a more complete or intimate picture of her. But sometimes, I'd still look at the Clementine line and wonder, would the Spina and Poisson still be what they are today had my mother survived? Silver once said that a name is a kind of inscription, a way to etch a memory into the world. When given a name, a cold, inanimate object can gain a completely new meaning. So, I will always associate the line with her in my heart. Over the past few weeks, I've also begun to appreciate how water can take in and hold our most intense feelings and memories, as well as how one may reflect on their past by watching the sea. I've lost many beloved people and memories to the sea. Even though I cannot stop for them and must continue to keep moving, the fact won't change that they existed in my life and gave me the reason and motivation to move forward. Always. But no matter what, we can't change the past. But I tell myself that I need to keep looking towards the future. Everyone, even my parents, have already overcome so many obstacles. Besides, I'm the president of Spina di Rosula. I've got to keep my chin up. We've reached the shore. Let's go. I'll show you the new Poisson. Navia... Do you think she's doing all right? Okay. Paimon supposes you're right. She's really been through a lot. It couldn't have been easy shouldering so much by herself. You're back! Traveler in Paimon, welcome back to Poisson. Oh, hey! Fancy seeing you again, Florent. Is it your turn to take care of Navia now? Hey, I can totally take care of myself. For the time being, I'll go around without any attendance. 
We did hand over some of Malus's old responsibilities to Florent, though. It's been really nice to have him around to help out. Thank you for the compliment, boss. As you see, I've been working closely with the boss on rebuilding Poisson. Mr. Malus was an extremely capable and respected member of the Spina. I've got some really big shoes to fill. All right, all right. There's no need to be so formal. Everyone's practically old friends by now. Were you waiting here for me? Did we manage to make any progress on the statue? Yeah, we contacted a sculptor about the job, but they can't get started on sourcing a correctly sized block without knowing the design that we want to use first. You're commissioning a statue? Ah, so basically, we've been meaning to commission a statue of my parents in commemoration of everything they've done for the Spina and the town of Poisson. But since my father was known as Callus the Unfaithful for the longest time, it would have been too controversial to commission a statue of him. But now that his name has been cleared, and the town is also being rebuilt, I thought this would be the perfect chance to actually realize this dream. The funds to build the statue were freely donated by the people of Poisson to show their appreciation for Miss Clementine and Mr. Callus and everything they did. Me? I'm just the newbie president that's running around and causing everyone trouble. <laughs> Maybe we can have this conversation again in a few decades, once I've done more for the town and the people. Hey, there's no need to be so humble. Didn't you just help save the entire country? I agree wholeheartedly. I also believe that Bosch should have a place on the statue. Hey, if you keep inflating my ego like this, I might just float off into the sky with my parasol. <laughs> just kidding. There's no way that I'd accept that kind of compliment at face value. At a minimum, I'd have to match what my father did for the people. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. I just don't think I'm ready yet. Anyway, Florent, now it's up to us to confirm the final design, right? Mm-hmm. We can ask the sculptor to start looking for a good block once we've decided on the poses for Miss Clementine and Mr. Callus. But we haven't had any real discussions yet on the possible designs. I feel like I should get a few promising designs first, and then send them over to you to review. Uh, there's no need for all that. Let's decide on a design right now. Hey, you! Come over here with me. Modeling a few poses, of course. <laughs> here, just pretend to be callous, and I'll be Clementine. That's... um... Didn't you say on the boat that callous and Clementine sounded like great partners? Well, then there's no one better to fill this role than my most valuable partner. Flora. Let's grab some reference shots. You've got it, boss. I'll go get the camera. Well, what do you think? Got any ideas? Well, I've actually discussed it a bit with Florent before, but I could never come up with any fresh or original ideas. It's probably because my idea of them is already kind of set in stone. So, I want to pick your brain for a bit and see if you can come up with some new and interesting ideas. I'm all good here, boss. Feel free to start posing whenever. A happy pose? You mean something like we were laughing together at a funny joke? Uh, would all that be able to come through with just a picture? Would we even be able to tell what they are supposed to be laughing about? Yeah, and that'd probably be a massive pain to sculpt as well. Hmm. Can one of you try striking a pose like you're talking while the other one laughs? Ugh, that actually sounds pretty hard to pull off. Forget it, let's try something else. Imposing, huh? Oh, I've got it. Let's try this. This pose. It makes me recall Spina de Rasula's glorious golden age. But isn't Clementine's pose a bit too bold and heroic? Was she really that kind of person? 
If we were to stick with this pose, maybe people would wonder if she was actually the real boss behind the scenes. Well, tabloids did indeed speculate as much back in the day, but the Spina pulled a few strings and made both the report and the journalist uh, disappear. Oh, Paimon, I was just kidding! Please don't make Paimon disappear. <laughs> what Florent meant was that we asked the journalist to choose a new alias. You're right, though, that this may not accurately represent the image of her in our hearts. Let's try to come up with something else. Ah, by that, do you mean as if we were standing on a boat and looking out at the sea? Sure, let's give that a try. Whoa, you really remind Paimon of a captain and their first mate! Look over there, my dear Clementine. As you can see, every tree on that island is dripping with mora fruit. Mm, but there's something off with the composition. This pose makes Mr. Callus look too tall next to the lady. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, then let's swap. Well, Paimon is a fan. A statue like this would look fantastic on a boat. Wait. But uh, we can't do that. Very few people would see the statue if we were to put it on a boat. This statue is meant to be placed in the town. But then, since we're putting it in the town, the whole point of the pose would be lost. Oh, okay. We'll try to think of something else. Oh, don't worry. We still got a lot of reference shots out of the session, and each of them can be considered to be a souvenir in their own right. Let's just keep the ideas we tried as backups. Man, if I knew I was going to do a photo shoot with the Traveler, I would have prepared a lot of outfits and props ahead of time. <laughs> oh, outfits! Oh, that's the errand I forgot back in the city. Do either of you still remember that girl? The girl I went to see with you two. Her name is Adele. Oh, my mom remembers her. She was the one that we met while investigating Mr. Callis's case, right? Yes, that's exactly who I'm talking about. So after the case, she was finally willing to talk to me. And she told me that she wanted to join the Spina too. I said that it's fine, but young children are not allowed to join the Spina. She will just have to wait a few years, and then we'll welcome her with open arms. Since she's still a child, though, she thought I was just trying to let her down gently. But how could I get her to believe that I meant what I said? In the end, I came up with an idea. I'd have a Spina uniform made and give it to her as a gift. But I got so busy and distracted in the city that I forgot to pick the uniform up. Uh, so I did forget something important after all. Don't worry, boss. I can send someone to pick it up right away. On the matter of the statue, we should still come up with a few more ideas for the design. I'll have to trouble you to source some for me. We could have just done that from the start. Uh, yeah, you're right. They'll have some value as souvenirs at least. <laughs> Navia! Florent, guess who's back? Huh? But aren't you supposed to... Oh, well, if it isn't Coulter. Back already from the Fortress of Meripede? <laughs> That's right. I finally finished serving my time. Gotta say, it turns out I was a lot tougher than I thought. After I got out, I immediately made a beeline back to Poisson. You'd say that familiar, briny smell became a primal call, urging me to forget everything else and just come back home. You wouldn't believe how much I miss Melissa's grilled fish. I dreamed about it every time I had to get a welfare meal down there underneath the sea. It's good to have you back, Coulter. You look as well as ever. And this guy is? Ah, let me introduce you. 
This is Coulter, another of Spina di Rosula's members. He was found guilty and sentenced to the fortress of Meripede some time ago. But, looking at it now, it was probably another one of Marcel's plots while he worked at the Confrerie of Cabriere. Wait, wait, Mr. Marcel? What do you mean? He was involved in some sort of plot? Have you not heard anything at all about the water from the Primordial Sea case? Well, I know that Fontaine got flooded, but then the water levels miraculously receded. I thought that was all there was to it and didn't care to ask for any more details. Do you mean Mr. Marcel was somehow involved with all that? Oh, looks like we'll have to explain everything from the top. That case... Uh, a lot of things have happened in Poisson since then. First things first, let me introduce you to these two. They're my most trusted partners, and they've been with me through thick and thin. Now you could call them Spina di Rosula's VIP helpers. Oh, nice to meet you. I don't recall Navia ever generously complimenting anyone like that before. So you must be pretty amazing to get that from her. we even met her. Humble again, as always, I see. Even when I was totally sincere with my praise. Nice, nice. Spina di Rosula always seems to attract great people. Oh, that reminds me. Where are Malus and Silver? Aren't they always by your side? Um, about that. Coulter, a lot of things happened while you were gone. As you can see, even Poisson isn't quite the same as how it was before you left. They lost their lives, keeping me safe during the flood. What did you say? This isn't some kind of morbid welcome home prank, right? You're just scaring me on purpose because I don't know anything about what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. <laughs> they weren't the only people we lost, either. Many others, including Melissa, also lost their lives in the disaster. Luce and Melissa... dead. They're just... gone? Luce... I was planning to give him a surprise gift once I ran into him again in town. I can't believe it. Malus and Coulter were friends for many years, and even served on many missions together during the early days of the Spina. I can understand how he feels. Oh, let's sit down somewhere, so I can tell you everything that has happened while you were gone. Fair warning, there was... a lot. I... okay. All of this, it's unbelievable. I, I can't believe that those stories were real. It all really happened. Has the world gone mad? I think you and I both feel the same way about the profound tragedy of Melusa's loss. And the sheer depravity of Marcel's actions. I thought Mr. Marcel would always stand by the Spina. Everything he had, the Spina gave to him. It's unconscionable to have received all that, and yet still plot to kidnap and dissolve you for his insane research. The good news is that the Confrerie of Cabriere is no more. Gone with them too is the entire synth manufacturing and distribution network. <sighs> we finally closed the curtain on that long struggle. Are you sure? But if Marcel wanted to rebel against us, he probably sent word in secret to Romeu. Romeu? Huh. Not a name I've heard before, either. Florent should remember him. You see, there was once a major internal dispute regarding funding the construction of the Aquabus lines. Romeu was the leader of the faction that thought such a vast sum of mora would be better spent improving the town of Poisson. 
But Mr. Callis believed that an opportunity to collaborate with the Court of Fontaine and the Fontaine Research Institute was hard to come by and would allow us to build many valuable relationships. Not only would the Aquabus be a good business investment, it would also boost our reputation among the general populace, eventually paying us massive dividends down the line. But the two couldn't come to an agreement. Romeu ended up taking a lot of people with him when he left Spino di Rosula altogether, and the split was on extremely bad terms. Ugh. And with Papa's stubbornness, I can definitely imagine how it must have gone down. And of course, when he was suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous injustice, those relationships that he spent a fortune to build didn't help in the least. Yeah. You could say it was the price he paid for sticking to his beliefs. Oh, that's a good point. If Callus was really as stubborn as you say, then wouldn't he have argued with the rank and file all the time? Oh, yeah. It eventually became a thing that just happened on every day that ended with Y. But Navia, uh, I mean, boss, you might not know this, but he wasn't always like that. He used to be a lot better with taking counsel. With him listening to our advice, and Ms. Clementine also frequently on our side, it was pretty smooth sailing for a good many years. But on the matter of the Aquabus, even Ms. Clementine completely stood by Mr. Callis's side. Huh. I never knew. But from my perspective, Romeo's position had a lot going for it. Couldn't they have sat down and talked it out? I think the Aquabus was just the straw that broke the camel's back. On that topic, they eventually came to a rather radical conclusion. They believed that Miss Clementine lost her ability to serve as an impartial mediator when she became pregnant with Callus's child. So they thought she had betrayed them? But that doesn't make any sense. Before she was their mediator, my mother was also her own person and a member of the Spina. She should have the right to take any side she wished. Yeah, but to them, even taking a side was betrayal enough. They felt like their voices could no longer be heard once their sole mediator had gone over to the other side. Of course, Ms. Clementine then passed away, and Mr. Callis began to regard the completion of the Aquabus project as her final wish. With that, the last hope of reconciliation was gone. So that's what happened. From that point on, Romeu and his people cut ties with the Spina and never gave us any kind of professional or personal courtesy ever again. Perhaps they've regarded us as enemies ever since they left. But even so, there is still no proof that they ever acted in concert with Marcel. I've also heard that they aren't in a good financial position, so they've been lying low for a while. But as long as they exist, they'll continue to be a threat. Huh. I think Coulter's got a point. Both Marcel and Romeu had my father in their sights for a very long time. Even though Marcel's faction has been dissolved, we still don't know anything about Romeu's whereabouts. If they're still trying to get revenge on us, with how distracted and vulnerable we are, now would be the best time. Good thinking, boss. We should keep an eye on them at all times. I'll let my men know right away. Mm hmm Thank you for that, Florent. And Coulter, thank you for telling me about this as well. Uh, don't worry, it's nothing. Do you have a moment right now? How about we go out for a walk? I've heard so many incredulous things today. I'm finding it a bit hard to calm down even now. I mean to think that I'll just never see them again. Ah, in that case, why don't we go back to the court? I can pick up Adele's uniform while we're there as well. It'll save Laurent's guys a trip. Want to come with me again, you two? You don't mind, do you, Coulter? Oh, uh, uh, of course. That's fine by me. Then let's go! Paimon feels like a lot's hinging on this visit. <laughs> we really are the best of partners. Come on, let's go. Well, we've walked far enough for now. Let's take a break. Since we're out for a walk, we shouldn't stress too much about the destination. 
I've grown old, so I'm not as fit as before. It's a good thing that at least my work down in the fortress was quite the workout. Well, Paimon thinks you're doing great. We didn't have to slow down for you at all. Back in the days before the Aquabus lines were built, we often had to hike north with our goods, then catch a boat to the court. Malus and I must have traveled this way hundreds of times. When we were tired, we would lay down for a while on the grass, and when we were hungry, we'd catch a fish or two. The spina was still on the rise back then. Mr. Callus was generous, and everyone had the chance to strike it rich. So, of course, we all worked really hard. And now, in the blink of an eye, the Aquabus lines have been built, and this road has fallen into disuse. Oh, I know. I was just being a little nostalgic. Then let's stay here a bit longer. Anyone want snacks? Oh, is this another chance to try some of Navia's macarons? Paimon's been dreaming of them. <laughs> yep, I figured you wouldn't say no to a few more. Oh, uh, wait. Let me check if I have all the ingredients. Uh, Malus and Silver used to take care of tasks like this. Okay, the stove's looking good. And as for the ingredients, seems like we're all out of flour and sugar. The two most important ingredients of all. Oh, would you? Oh, but it would be too much to ask you to go on a trip just for those. We should contribute to making the macaron too. Don't worry, we cook out in the wild all the time, so she should have some stuff on hand. Oh, that's great. Then I'll leave the ingredient gathering to you. As long as we have some sweet flowers and wheat, I can start the baking. Then I'll go look for some boxes nearby for a makeshift table and chairs. Great. Then I'll prep the stove. Let's get to work, everyone. Ah, how did it go? Did you find the ingredients? All done your part. Just leave the rest to me. Whoa, these macarons look and taste magnificent! Your cooking is as good as ever, Navia. Boss's baking skills have always been famous. Everyone in the Spina knows how exceptionally talented she is. Oh, <laughs> it's just a hobby. There's no need to praise me for it like that. Have you two seriously never considered joining us? You're so close to the boss, and she obviously trusts you with all her heart, so... Huh, I, I see. Is that why you have to always stay on the road? <laughs> you just happened to walk in on our little reunion. It's actually been quite a while since we last spent time together. Adventurers never stay in one place for long. The name of Spina di Rosula would just tie them down. Besides... After everything we've been through together, I'm sure our hearts would remain intertwined even if we found ourselves on opposite sides of the world. Even if Prima was far beyond the horizon, she'd still remember the delicious taste of Navia's macaron. I understand now. Then I am very lucky indeed to have been graced with the chance to meet the two of you. I will endeavor to make the most of this short yet fortuitous encounter and enjoy every moment we spend together. We've got no wine with us, but let's still toast with water in celebration of this moment. Cheers! Hey, what are you doing? Quick, join in on the toast! May your travels go smoothly, may the spina continue to grow, and may our friendship last until the end of time. Hey there, Ludovine. How's business lately? Ah, the Demoiselle of Spina de Rosula. I must say, your generous patronage is the one thing keeping me from going bankrupt. <laughs> Nonsense. We all know what a talented businesswoman you are. No, oh, man, don't forget, she's the boss now. My mistake, my mistake. I just got so used to calling her Demoiselle. Are you here for the uniform? Yep. 
I forgot to drop by earlier when I was running errands around here. <laughs> I didn't expect Demoiselle to come and pick it up in person. It's just a uniform after all. Any of your folks could have come instead. Nadia's always liked to take even small things seriously. Hey, that's not the only reason I'm here. We mostly just needed a walk to clear our heads. There are few things more uplifting than taking the first step on a new journey. <laughs> uh, boss has got a point. Going on a trip with friends is always better than staying cooped up at home. Very well. Please, wait here while I retrieve the uniform for you. Uh, can someone remind Paimon again why Adele wants to join the Spina? <laughs> She hasn't given me any concrete reasons. All she says is that she really looks up to me. After we cleared her father's name, she became a lot more cheerful and outgoing. It's probably because she now knows for sure that her father was never a bad person. She said she used to be terrified of Papa, so as a result, she found all the rest of the Spina super scary as well. But the Spina is very different now. She mustered up the courage to talk to me, and felt like I could really understand her. Yeah, you could say that. By uncovering the truth about the case, I was able to give her closure at the same time. She said that she wanted to become someone like me. Someone who could lend a hand to others, instead of standing still and waiting for others to help her. From the sound of it, she'll be a wonderful addition to the Spina. I think so too. But for now... Let's focus on giving her a great atmosphere to grow and thrive. She can commit to us once she's older, and can really make that decision for herself. Is something up, Traveler? Huh? T tailing? Oh, Paimon's coming! <clears throat> I'll go check it out, too. Coulter, please hold on to this for me. Uh, all right. We knew you were going to be difficult! Seems like if we want them to talk, we're gonna need to teach them a lesson first. Brothers, there's no need to skulk in the dark anymore. Let's take them out! Hold that pose! Ah! Breaking news! Game's up, Sonny Silver. Now, talk. Who are you? And why were you tailing us? <sighs> Don't think we'll let you off easy if you keep silent. <sighs> How did it go, boss? Are any of you hurt? <laughs> if you thought they stood any chance against us, you were sorely mistaken. Anyway... Stop playing tough, and start talking. There won't be any room for negotiation once the Maison Guardianage gets involved. We... were looking to get vengeance on Spina de Rasula. We were discovered, and can't beat you in a fight. We admit it. We lost. Get revenge? Wait, you're not Romeo's followers, are you? You actually know that name? But if you do, then surely you should understand why we hate you so much! Indeed. You haven't got the faintest hope of winning right now. <sighs> we were out drinking when we saw Navia. We got so angry we decided to follow you guys, and look for an opportunity to really mess up your day. Too bad you guys messed up ours first. Huh? You're pretty sharp. But so what? We didn't do anything. And now it should be pretty obvious that we can't do anything to you anyway. Seeing you like that just really ticked us off. And we let the drink go to our heads. <sighs> Listen. Callus is long dead. No matter what happened in the past, I want to be able to start things anew. 
I am the current president of Spina di Rosula. If your boss wants to talk with me, I'd be happy to meet with him. I won't press charges for your attack. That should also help demonstrate my sincerity. I understand. Thank you. I'll let our boss know. But if you so much as think about pulling something like this again, I won't be so lenient next time. Understood? All right. We get it. Come on, let's go. Uh, are you sure it's okay to just let them go like that, Navia? <sighs> I don't want to inherit my father's grudges, too. And moreover, when it comes to the Aquabus, I don't think what my father did was entirely correct either. If the other side is willing to talk, I'm happy to open the door for a reconciliation. Opportunities for new beginnings are all around us. I support Boss's decision as well. The concept of an eye for an eye is a primitive practice that has no place in today's Spina di Rosula. Yes. Plus, we already know that they're strapped for cash. If their financial situation is that dire, they don't have what it takes to challenge us. So this may be the best time to talk. I still think we should keep an eye out for Romeo's folks, though. If he decides to ignore the warning I gave his men, then we could still have a fight on our hands. Yeah, those guys definitely didn't look like big fans of yours. I'd rather things not go that far, since, though we haven't talked to each other for years, once upon a time we were all a part of the Spina di Rosula family. Yep, that's how I feel as well. Anyway, now that we sent them packing, we don't have to worry about those guys anymore. It's getting late already, so why don't we stay the night in the Fleuve Sandra? We can head back to Poisson tomorrow. I'll also ask someone to write Florent a letter and inform him of everything that happened here today, so he can increase security around Poisson and be on guard against any suspicious individuals. Do we have to stay in the Fleuve Sondre again? Even the pillows there smell like seaweed. <laughs> Sorry, that's just what happens when you live near water and don't get much sunlight. Poisson's pretty much the same, though, so I've long since gotten used to it. We can still go out in the evening for some grilled fish and drink, so. Bet you there'll be people singing sea shanties, too. How does that sound? Huh. That does sound pretty cool. Okay, Paima's on board now. Let's go! Paima wants to sing, too! Coming back here really does feel like this place is starting to grow on Paimon. If you think about it, it would be kind of weird if the Spina's base at the court was some super luxurious building like the Palais Marmonia. <laughs> totally. Right on the money, Paimon. Although, of course, with the continued growth of the Spina, Papa wanted Poisson to eventually grow into a metropolis, not unlike the court. He was a very ambitious man who rarely looked behind or beneath him. For better or worse, that always made him stand out from the crowd. And that's also why people hated him just as much as they loved him. All right. Uh, why don't you go wait for me at the restaurant? I'll go do some prep, and I'll get someone to tidy up your room while I'm at it. You can use the same room as last time. You still remember the room number, yeah? Yep, yep. Kind of hard to forget when there are only so many rooms here, after all. <laughs> oh, did I just hear someone taking a dig at Fluv Sandra? I'll tell my guys to stuff your pillows full of actual seaweed right now. Oh, Paimon, sorry! Please have mercy, Navia! If you do that, then Paimon really won't be able to sleep at all! <laughs> I was just kidding. Be on your way now. Hello? Are you asleep yet? Oh, no, not at all. I just figured that since we don't get to enjoy nights like these very often, we should try to enjoy it to the fullest. Want to go fishing? I've got some rods and lures ready. Oh, so that's the prep you were talking about. Oh, welcome. <laughs> well, hopefully I didn't wake you or anything. Don't worry. 
You don't have to do any actual fishing if you're too tired. Just think of it as keeping me company. How does that sound? Okay, let's go. To the fishing spot. How can you call this fishing when you're using a fully automatic rod? Mm hmm. <laughs> What's the problem? Lots of people in Poisson use rods like these. But, but shouldn't fishing be all about, you know, attentively watching the float and then excitedly reeling in the catch when you finally hook something? Well, that's one way to enjoy fishing. What do you think, Traveler? <laughs> that's how I feel as well. To me, I'm happy as long as I catch some fish. Honestly, Paimon's mainly shocked at how much energy you still have at this hour. Usually by this time of night, it's a struggle for Paimon to even keep her eyes open. Huh. It might just be something that runs in my family. That's a thing? <laughs> I'm sure you'd get even sleepier if I delved more deeply into it. Anyway, I was just thinking about how grateful I am to my mother. As well as the rest of the Spina. My father always had a lot of unrealistic expectations for me. But the more that he tried to get me to become like him, the less I wanted to listen to what he had to say. My mother never had those kinds of expectations, though. I've heard that she had only one wish for me, which was that I would have a happy and secure childhood. All the members of the Spina greatly respected her wish, so no matter what I did as a child, they were happy to humor me. <laughs> Can you imagine? Whenever my father wanted to scold me for something I'd done, everyone would form up into two rows and just stand silently and listen to him rant. Malus and Silver were always there, too. No matter what Papa yelled, nobody else would say a word. Eventually, Papa must have recognized scolding me over trivial matters was pointless, because he eventually stopped getting on my case so often. Paimon would have never guessed. <laughs> yeah. Looking back on it now as an adult, I can hardly believe how patient and kind everyone was. When I was young, I often thought that I could do whatever I wanted, because there'd always be someone there to clean up after me. But once, I saw Malus come back wounded. He wouldn't tell me how he'd been injured, but... I could tell it had something to do with me. I learned then that there's always a cost to making a mistake. The more you care about those around you, the more you should care about doing the right thing to the best of your abilities. Because... If you do falter, there'll inevitably come a time when you'll have to face the consequences. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought that up. I wasn't planning to talk about sad things tonight. Basically, I was just saying that the nurturing atmosphere of the Spina must have been my mother's legacy, rather than my father's. And if that's the only way that I can continue to feel her love, then I'd like to pass that warmth on. Is that why you let those guys go today? Mm-hmm. Although... Maybe there's a part of not wanting to repeat the mistakes of the past. I want to be reasonable, at least. Hey, look! I think you've got something on the line! Uh, but why isn't the rod automatically reeling it in? Oh, there must be something wrong with how I installed the mechanism. It was my first time putting one of those rods together. We can't let it get away. Come on, you two. Let's catch it. You want Paimon to help too? You... You didn't attach a hook to your line? Stop wasting time! The boss ain't gonna wait all day! We'll go ahead with the operation tomorrow. Do with that information as you wish. Uh, 
<laughs> well, your rod was missing a part, too, so I guess that makes it fair. Well, if we're just talking about the number of missing parts, sure. <sighs> oh, never mind. Paimon really can't keep her eyes open anymore. <laughs> All right. Go to bed. I had a great time today. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow. Ah, so how was last night? Did you get a good night's sleep? Paimon dreamt that she danced with the sea stars, so you could say it was stellar. Get it? Huh. <laughs> I didn't know you had such a great sense of humor. See, this guy gets it. <laughs> anyway, let's head out. I'll arrange for a boat to take us back to Poisson. I'm sure Adele will be happy to see you two again. Paimon hopes she'll really appreciate your gift. I hope so, too. Adele, we're back! We brought you a gift from the court, too. Whoa! Thank you so much, boss! Don't call her boss, okay, Adele? Just Miss Navia would be fine. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. I don't mind. Besides the gift, I've also got another surprise. Guess who's here? It's been a while! Oh, it's you two. It has been a while indeed. Thank you so much for your help on Jacques' case. I've heard that you also helped save all of Fontaine. You're truly just like the great heroes of legend. You're really amazing! And if Miss Navia's your friend, then she must be super amazing, too! What's in this thing? Can I look? Of course! Go ahead. Oh, it's... a Spina di Rosula uniform! Is it for me? But... isn't it a bit big? Well, it's a gift for future you. When you first told me that you were interested in joining the Spina, I was overjoyed. But it's the Spina's responsibility to protect everyone as well. Being a member means becoming involved in all kinds of dangerous situations. And since you're still young, I don't want your mom to have to worry about your safety. So I turned you down then by telling you that you'll have to wait until you're older. But this uniform is a promise that you can join us once you're old enough to wear it. Oh, so that's it. Well, thank you so much, Miss Navia. I'll work hard and grow up as fast as I can. <laughs> uh, but you can't really grow up faster by working hard. You've got to be patient. Everyone, I'm really grateful that you remembered my daughter's wish and took it seriously. Thanks to the protection of the Spina, even though her father's no longer with us, we've still felt plenty of warmth and security. Oh, it's the least we could do. As long as you live in Poisson, even if you're not an official member, you're still part of the family. B boss Huh? Is something up, Laurent? I've got something urgent to report. Romeu and his folks have gathered outside Poisson and even shipped in a huge pile of explosives! What? E explosives What do they want? It seems like they've been planning this for some time. We started investigating as soon as we received your letter yesterday. But Romeu and his folks must have gotten wind as well, because they abandoned their former posts before we could even check on them. We investigated their tracks and found out that they're after Poisson. Could they have smartened up since we caught them red-handed at the court? Seems like they've got no interest in sitting down and talking at all. We should have gone straight to the Maison Guardianage. Sorry, I, I underestimated the situation. Well, too late now, I suppose. Florent, where are they keeping their explosives? On the hill to the east of Poisson, near the Clementine Line. They want to blow up the Clementine Line? Certainly sounds like it. 
Romeu and his followers hate the Spina, and everything to do with Callus. And the Aquabus was the source of their contention. If they manage to blow up the Aquabus line, all that rubble will come crashing down the hill and straight into Poisson. Are they insane? There's tons of innocent people in Poisson! Yeah. If they've been planning this for ages, they're definitely not going to let this opportunity slip by. We have to issue an evacuation order to the townspeople, and get them as far away from the entrance as possible. That should save them from the worst of it. Let's get everyone onto our ship. That should be the safest place. <sighs> My dear partner, can I leave the Clementine line to you? If the explosives do go off, not only would the people of Poisson be in danger, any aquabuses using the line would plummet to the ground. Let's stop their insanity first, then settle the score with them. Leave it to us, Navia. Please stay safe, too. Let's go, you two. We've got to act fast. Miss Coralie. Please take Adele to the ship. Watch out, boss! <sighs> what do you think you're doing, Coulter? <laughs> I thought all the annoying little hindrances had left, but I still couldn't get rid of you. Uh... -uh. You mean, this was all a trick? So that you'd be left alone with me? Coulter, are you with Romeo too? Oh. <laughs> I get it now. You knew about their plans all along. You only told us they were doing badly so that we'd drop our guard. Not quite. Though I share their positions on some issues, I've never cared for his more radical ideas. And that's because, out of the entire Spina di Rosula, I only hate you. Only you, Navia. You better stick close to me. Romeu promised me that he would leave Poisson alone if I could just take you out. But it was like you were glued at the hip to that pesky traveler. You never gave me a chance to make my move. Romeu has lost his patience. I didn't have to be here today, you know, but I swore that I'd kill you, even if it meant being buried with you in the rubble. Why? Only someone as clueless about the past as you would ask such a foolish question. You never saw the heyday of Spina di Rosula, nor did you ever live through the golden age of Poisson. But I, I saw it all with my own eyes, and then I had to watch it all Die, little by little. And it was all because of you, Navia. Clementine died because of you. Callus died because of you. Malus and Silver died because of you. And so many more dead. Everyone dead, all because of you. So the shock and grief you showed us before, that was an act too? Now you're catching on. I heard Malus was dead the moment I got out. Did you know, down there in that blasted fortress, I spent a long time thinking about what happened and resolving to apologize to Malus as soon as I got out. Back then, because of that Aquabus, we had a huge fallout. I was convinced that all he cared about was loyalty and that he had completely lost his capacity for critical thinking. The years passed by in a blur after that. I thought I had finally begun to understand him, and that he could help me relive the good old days again. But then he died, and it was because of you again, Navia. It's always because of you. <laughs> I once loved the Spina and Poisson more than anyone else. But what is left now of either besides death and ruin? You've single-handedly destroyed everything that was beautiful. Everything I've ever loved. Don't listen to him, boss. He's just spouting nonsense. Have you ever considered that maybe the people around you don't actually care about you at all? 
Have you ever considered that maybe you only get respect because you're Callus and Clementine's child? That you've never done anything worthy? That you're just a big nothing? Have you ever considered that maybe people don't stay in Poisson because of you, but only because they have such beautiful memories of the past before you came? Because if you do falter, there'll inevitably come a time when you'll have to face the consequences. And when that time comes, those most precious to you really will throw themselves in front of you and pay the price for your mistakes. <laughs> yeah, looking back on it now as an adult, I can hardly believe how patient and kind everyone was. But is that really why they support me? Is their kindness real? Shut your mouth! I, for one, really like Miss Navia, and my mom loves her too! Uh. I don't know how to explain it, but I like her, and that's that! I'm sure Mr. Malus would be extremely disappointed in you right now! You've somehow managed to pin the blame for every mistake and tragedy in our history on the boss herself! Get out of the way, Faron! I don't want to hurt you! You're gonna have to! Boss, there's no time for this! Stop hesitating and get out of here before you get buried! Maybe you think you're being the realist by painting the history of the Spina and Poisson like this. But the love that I felt from everyone was just as real. I felt it. They've helped me get to where I am. And even now, I will continue to believe in that love. So let me show you just how much I love the Spina di Rosula. <sighs> Laurent, I'll leave the town to you. Summon the other members and help with the evacuation of the townspeople. If you find any of Coulter's accomplices, subdue them quickly. And don't give them the chance to harm any ordinary civilians. I can't allow my partner to face the danger on the Clementine line alone. Got it, boss. I'm on it. Are you okay, Navia? I don't know, but I have to go. Let's hurry up there. We have to protect the Clementine line. If they're gonna blow up the waterway, they must have planted the explosives next to the support pillars. That should do it, right? <sighs> Navi and Florent should be able to relax now. Oh, you're right. They could have set explosives elsewhere, too. Let's go.
I heard from Thierry that even they're your enemies now. They were once a part of Spina di Rusula. Do you plan to settle this privately with them? I have nothing more to say to them. Regardless of whether their hatred and anger towards me or the Spina was justified, anyone who's willing to endanger innocent civilians is no longer sane enough to even be worth trying to talk to. Please, prosecute them in accordance to the law. Spina di Rosula will not raise any objections. Sounds good. We're very appreciative of your help. Without it, the consequences would have been far worse. All right. This operation is a wrap. Take him away. We won, Navia! We saved everyone! And you were so cool! Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we were just in time. <sighs> It's probably because I expended too much elemental energy at once. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Uh, but you usually glow up whenever other people compliment you. Paimon's not used to seeing you like this. Boss, we managed to catch all the infiltrators in the town. The Maison Guardianage is taking them away as well. It seems like Romeu really went all in on this mission. If he sent literally everyone he had, though, that also means we've caught them all, too. We won't have to worry about them from now on. Huh. Got it. That's good, at least. <sighs> Coulter. I can understand how you feel. <laughs> the things that we lost, they're forever beyond our grasp now. And that makes them appear even more precious. I am not callous, and I will also never become him. The Spina and the Poisson that you loved are both gone, but I, I will not change how I feel about our future. I still believe that this is a great opportunity to start anew. I will spend more of what the Spina earns on the betterment of Poisson. What's more, I'd also like to propose some changes to the Aquabus routes, so that one day, the people of Poisson will enjoy the boons it brings as well. I know what you're trying to say. Mr. Callus would never have said anything like that. There are too many things in life that are just beyond our control. In that, we are the same. Henceforth, you are no longer a member of Spina di Rosula, but... Once you're discharged from the fortress again, you're welcome to pay another visit to Poisson. Thank you, Navia. As I thought, Boss really is a kind and gentle person. She is also, I must say, a truly unlucky person. Thank you for protecting the Clementine line. I was actually really scared, you know. I mean, even the Callus line won't be getting rebuilt anytime soon. If I'd lost the Clementine line too, I wouldn't know how to live with myself. A name is a way to etch a memory onto the world. Losing the line that bears her name, that I can see every day, would be like losing my mother all over again. Seeing it still standing there, tall and proud, it makes me really happy. What happened while we were gone? Honestly, you look more upset than tired or anything. Just give her some time. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Can you give me a hand? I really don't have much strength left. Traveler. I want to ask you something, and please, tell me the truth. Do you really see me as your partner? Of course. Huh. That's good then. Hearing that, it brings me more relief than I can say. How do you feel, Navia? Any better after taking a break? Mm. I feel quite a bit better, but I should probably still rest for a few more days. Sorry, partner. I said some weird things earlier. 
Feel free to just ignore me. I used to think that I'd never doubt myself. But... You could say I've discovered that I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Coulter mentioned my parents. As well as Malus and Silver. It's all thanks to them that I've made it this far in life. Do you think... They ever regretted the choices they made? Has my existence made this world a better place? Don't think like that, Navia. You've already done more than enough. No matter what others think, we'll always support you to the end of the world. Well, since it's ended up like this, I suppose it's time for me to make a confession as well. There's something that I've been keeping from you as well, boss. Please, follow me. Everything is already prepared. Uh, Florong, I hope you can understand that I can't deal with any more shocking revelations right now. <laughs> Don't worry. This surprise will be a pleasant one. Why is everyone gathered here? And what's... this? This was supposed to be a gift to you from everyone in the town. We were originally planning to show it to you once it was finished, but special times call for special measures. I've never seen you look so defeated before, so I've decided to show you the designs before the final product was done. I... do I really look that bad? Well, if you're ready, I'll unveil the present. Hmm. <laughs> oh, th this is Papa, Mother, and me. We designed the look for Miss Clementine based on old camera records. As well as personal recollections from members of Vespina. Wow! This is the statue you mentioned before? It is indeed. To be honest, we decided on the design a long time ago, and gave the sculptor permission to begin working. We only asked Boss to decide on a design so she wouldn't realize we had already started. How could we only have statues of Mr. Callus and Mrs. Clementine? Even though Boss is still young, We've all seen the work she's put in regarding the whole synth business and the rebuilding of Poisson. We wanted to commemorate her contributions with the statue as well. I don't know what Spina di Rosula was like in the past, but I know it's a great organization now. With Navia around, we're not worried about this place's future. We're gathered here today to tell our boss that we support you and believe in you wholeheartedly. I believe everyone is here for you, not the glory days. That's what we believe as well! Thank you so much, everyone. Then I'll be brave and just accept everyone's support for what it is. This really is quite the surprise. I never thought that I'd have the chance to stand next to my mother. Not even in my wildest dreams. <laughs>